I'm Ken Rockwell. Let's see how to transfer all of our data from our old iPhone, 14 Pro Max, to our new iPhone, 15 Pro Max. I've been getting this wrong for enough years that I finally have the process down, so here's how to do it. The worst thing to do is don't go into a store and let them tell you, oh yeah, just give us 10 minutes, we'll, we'll get it all done. Because I have friends who've done that, and they walk out of the store all happy, going, hey, my apps are all here, everything's working like a charm, and then they discover that their real estate contacts from 10 years or 20 years or 30 years of business are all gone. Or another friend actually lost all of her photographs for years, and they run back to the store, and by the time they get back to the store, the store is like, oh, your phone's gone. And they've lost this very important information. The gotcha is that for whatever reason, the backup just didn't have that information and it didn't get back to their phone and they were dead in the water. The important thing to recognize is make sure whatever you do, you get your new phone in your hot little hands for a day or two with your old phone so you can transfer it over properly and confirm that it actually got through. The best way to transfer I've discovered is not to restore from a backup because if you're a creator like me, I have tons of photographs and music and video that I've created myself that are loaded onto my iPhone or maybe just gotten through iTunes or however it is, just files, and it turns out that stuff, if it could be on your computer someplace, that doesn't get stored in a backup because the backups are relatively efficient. They so don't store that because I know you can restore it separately from your computer. Maybe, maybe not. So I found the best way is not to do your manual options for transferring data over. Take the obvious option, which is usually the top option, which just says transfer everything over directly from the phone just by holding the two of the phones together. Don't do a manual one. Let it do it automatically. Now, when you do that, it's going to start off, and it seems really simple. It asks you a bunch of little questions. It's like, do you want to do this? Do you want to transfer your phone number to your new phone? The answer is yes. Do you want to do this for your watch? I didn't have a transfer my watch because I got a new Apple Ultra 2 at the same time as my 15 Pro Max and I figured I would just couple the new watch to the new phone separately, and that worked. But the gotcha was that even though I started everything, I'd walk away, of course, because everything takes like two minutes to process. So I walk away, come back. Sometimes that process had completed. Sometimes it did not, and I had to start over from scratch again. You won't actually be transferring data until it tells you it's transferring data and gives you an estimate for how long it's going to take. I find it takes about an hour for every 100 gigabytes. So mine took about four hours to transfer when it finally started to transfer and I could just walk away. Otherwise, if I walked away, it gave up and started asking me questions about redoing Face ID or those sort of things. iPhones are awesome. The only difficult part is actually getting everything transferred from the old phone to the new phone. Now, once you get it on the new phone, all of your apps are still going to be downloading directly from the cloud, which is good because you get a clean download of each app. But there'll be a while. If you're like most people, you've probably got hundreds of apps. It may take a while. So you get a little icon showing that it's loading the apps. One display setting that didn't come through is I prefer the zoomed option that makes everything a little bigger and easier to read and the icons larger. That's for display zoom larger text. I had to reset this manually when I restored it to the phone. But those things are minor. But it's always good to take the time to go find all these things and get them all reset before you have to run out to the field and you're starting to use your phone for business or whatever you usually use it for, and you'll be all set. I did it on a Sunday afternoon. Take a day when you can be without either phone for a while because it's going to take a while and you need to be patient. Once all of your apps load up, now you're pretty much done, but you're not done yet. What you want to do is while you've still got the time to relax is open up each app because about half of them are going to have to have you re-enter your passwords and user IDs. So you're going to have to look all that stuff up. You don't want to have to look that up when you're in the field of driving your car and discover, you know, you go to your bank app like, oh, I got to log in again. Take the time to go through all of your apps and it's amazing how many apps you use and get that all done at the same time. And then the last thing you want to do is you want to go out to your car and rehook up your Bluetooth because it's a new phone, rehook up the Bluetooth and rehook up CarPlay. And when you get that done, you're mostly done. There is a trick. I don't know how many people do this, but I certainly do. You can customize the position of the apps in CarPlay. The way you set that is you go to Settings, General, CarPlay. You choose the car to which you've got CarPlay, and then you hit Customize. And now you can move these up and down, and you can delete them. And you can also have them not just installed in your car. And you can move these around, but while you're doing this, this doesn't show it the same way it shows in your car display. So look at the car display while you move this around, and remove things and add things, and then you should be good to go. None of these final steps are particularly critical, but it is more convenient to do them while you're relaxing and have the time to enter all your passwords and rearrange your icons than to try to do it while on Monday morning while you're trying to drive to work in traffic and really should not be fiddling with your phone because you'll want to get this stuff where you want it so it's there while you're driving your car. Thanks again for watching KenRockwell.com here on KenRockwell.tv.